Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for joining us uh, on this edge computing webinar, uh, where I will be discussing uh, a customer use case with APT, uh, a key edge computing partner in the UK. I'm Robin Odi, Senior Analyst at Canalis, uh, focusing on channels uh, and MSPs and managed services generally. Uh, today, I'm joined by two members of APT, Managing Director John Thompson and John Andrew. Hi, guys. Thank you very much for joining Hi. us. Hello. Hi. So just to get us kicked off, um, before we uh, before we dive in, uh, I just want to uh, thank Schneider Electric for uh, bringing us all together. Uh, I know APT is a, a key Schneider partner in the UK, so we're going to be discussing a use case where you guys worked on on, on an edge computing um, work for uh, for an NHS trust uh, on this um, and using Schneider Electric equipment. But before we do that, I want to dive into uh, some market data that we've prepared here at Canalis around edge computing trends. Um, so allow me to share my screen. So um, I wanted to dive into um, some of the key trends in, in edge computing in, in 2021 um, and where we're seeing kind of real development across the channel for key partners like ABT um, and where we're seeing some of the opportunities and challenges uh, presenting themselves uh, so far. So a kind of quick overview on market trends and, and a summary. Now we know that in 2020, one of the things that really pushed everyone uh, in terms of their investments, was moving from on-premises environments to cloud generally. Um, the shift to these cloud operating models was, was absolutely massive and certainly took quite a long time for people to, to move around some of their investments, to move around some of their business, particularly some of their data, um, either whether they're moving into public cloud environments or, or part of an as-a-service offering in, in um, some of the more private uh, cloud environments or on-premises environments where uh, lockdowns has ended. But one of the things that we saw in this was also just how important the sustainability uh, argument had come in to investing in your data center and in your, your cloud developments. Customers are looking to improve their operating costs for certainly and their energy efficiency as well. Um, but what's, what's really interesting is, is that sustainability is becoming a huge part, not just of vendor marketing, but also of partner KPIs and how they're measuring themselves um, on, on the deployments that they have for their customers. And customers want to know how they can measure some of these efficiencies, not just improving costs, um, but also improving their, their ethical stance as well. One of the other things that obviously came into this and, and saw massive infrastructure boom, even where we saw uh, a decline in some in infrastructure uh, business in the SMB side of things, was the hyperscale expansion of data centers. Um, we know that some of the key cloud service providers um, are investing in massively in what would be considered kind of edge data centers, but for them are, are kind of very large edge data centers. So we're seeing a huge amount of infrastructure being poured into, into those spaces as well. Um, and we're also seeing, kind of, we're seeing Asian providers move into Europe and move into the European environment like Alibaba Cloud, Tencent, announcing plans to expand uh, internationally as well uh, as, as uh, their build capacity in, in Southeast Asia. So we know that we've seen Microsoft and AWS announce huge amounts of, of data center build as well. So we know there's a lot of business going there. But the reason why that's really important and the reason why they're investing in these things is because there's a huge demand for data sovereignty uh, certainty. So particularly from public sector customers, we know that public sector environments, public sector data in uh, certain environments like the Nordics, for example, have long been um, uh, a key point of concern making sure that some of that public sector data stays within the countries themselves, um, that they're held on uh, infrastructure in those countries and that the data is not transferred outside of those environments. But we're also seeing that grow in other countries in the EU as well. We know that countries like Spain and France and Italy are investing in local data centers, both private and, and public cloud as well. So we're seeing cloud service providers invest with large telcos, uh, as well as building their own local data centers and regions, as they call them, um, and that's what, what that's being driven by is customer demand for sovereignty. So we know that customer demand is also uh, increasing in their own on-premises environments, particularly in the first half of 2021, where we saw an increase in, in uh, on-premise infrastructure demand that recovered from 2020 to a certain extent. Um, now, one of the things that's hampering this, though, are supply chain constraints. And we know that this is uh, having a massive uh, impact on not just not necessarily on the demand, but clearly on the fulfillment uh, of infrastructure and the improvement of growth in that market. So at Canalis, what we do is we always look at our forecasts 
Uh, we revised our forecast for the second half of this year down slightly in terms of the best case scenario, um, purely because it's difficult to understand quite how well uh, infrastructure will do. We think about service storage and networking uh, compared to where the demand is, and that's primarily driven by fulfillment issues. That's likely to continue well into 2022, and we anticipate 2023 as well. So we know that that's going to be a global issue, but we're also going to be continuing to see that in Europe. We know that some European countries are being prioritized over others. So smaller European countries um, often find themselves at the back of the queue. And that can be really difficult in terms of managing customer expectations. What we have seen at Canalys is really important for partners and customers to communicate with one another, but also for partners to get communication from vendors. So that vendors consistently making sure that partners understand where the lead times are going, when they can expect some of these products so that they can then put that information out to their customers as well. We know that a key part of the supply chain is communication and that's helping deals get pushed through. So if people know when they can expect things, that really that really helps to, to minimize the amount of deals that are getting canceled or being put off in the infrastructure space. And we can improve that channel growth that we're all looking for. A final thing that's that we're seeing as a trend, which is is certainly helping some of this some of this boost is government stimulus uh, throughout the EU on digital transformation plans. So we know that uh, a number of EU governments, as well as the UK government, are investing hugely in a, in a digital boom. Uh, we'll have a little bit, a little look at this um, a bit later on what that means for the UK. And I'm sure that the guys from APT can also enlighten us on, uh, on any potential benefits that they might be able to see here. But I know that when we look at, uh, when we look at, uh, the government stimulus, particularly in places in, in Europe, like Spain and Italy and France and Germany, we're seeing that really uh, boost investments in infrastructure, helping partners to gain access to funds to digitally transform their customer environments. And that's helping some of that investment as well. So I think all of this comes together shows that the demand is clearly there. Fulfillment can sometimes be an issue. And really, um, in some cases, it's really about how partners are managing some of these hybrid environments managing both software delivered from the cloud as well as on-premises infrastructure and data between on-premise and, and cloud environments and where the opportunities are there clearly. Just a quick view on uh, EMEA infrastructure spend uh, in the first half of the year. Um, approximately $19 billion was spent on, on just the infrastructure products themselves in the first half of the year across EMEA. Um, now, obviously the, the, the bulk of this in the networking space and also in the server space, we saw a decline in non-industry standard servers, uh, which won't uh, won't surprise some of you. But we're seeing a big growth in in uh, service provider routers, wireless LAN, and Ethernet switches as well. Particularly as there's there's a huge amount of refresh. One of the things that we're seeing that um, is likely to grow as well as remote working continues and hybrid working environments settle themselves moving forward, is a large growth in campus networks. Um, and again, along with uh, edge infrastructure growth, we're expecting this to, to fuel quite a, a big boom in 2022 and 2023 uh, as some of that, some of that demand is, is finally fulfilled before some of that tails off as well. So look at campus networks as being, as being a key investment area in the next couple of years, certainly. Um, just a quick look at, at some key countries, the kind of largest countries really in Europe that, that we focus on in certainly in Western Europe, UK, Germany and France. Um, just a, a, a quick view on, on how it's going. And you can probably see one of, the, one of the really interesting things here is the servers declined in the UK primarily because um, we had seen a large amount of server demand on refresh in the last couple of years, which has tailed off anyway, as well as being contributed to by some of the supply chain constraints, as well as being, um, as well as being kind of natural decline uh, based on a decline on on-premises investments but we are seeing hyperscale growth uh, there. We're obviously seeing storage affected by, by some of the issues in, in the cloud, and we know that as service models are taking over some of that, but the networking growth is really strong. So we know that network spend is, is particularly high. We know that people are obviously investing in software-defined networks, uh, and some of that is moving into kind of uh, as a service package models where partners are seeing opportunities um, bundling the software, bundling security, as well as, um, as well as the networking hardware itself, the management, the insight, and the managed service are all coming together to provide an opportunity. So total growth in the first half of the year was approximately 7% uh, overall in EMEA. What's, coming back to this uh, energy consumption and, and um, this point really about um, 
how uh, how people can can develop solutions that help customers reduce the energy consumption. We ask partners in our uh, in our global Candafero partner base, which is a uh, a, a global um, kind of a social media really for for partners uh, called Candafero, where they sign up and essentially they answer quick polls and surveys. Um, and one of the um, many things that, that we've been asking them about is sustainability. You know, it's top of top of mind for a lot of partners as they look to provide some of these solutions for their customers. Now we know that um, for for a number of partners one of the ways in which this can grow is around creating predictable frameworks for how they help customers to improve their energy consumption over time. Um, we know that this is growing, but it will take time for clear frameworks to grow in the market. We know that there's a lot of different stakeholders in this place. Um, we also know that it's going to be difficult for particular countries to set out their goals moving forward for what they see as being uh, incentives or stimulus for companies that are you know, minimizing their energy consumption. Um, this is all still in the works. And, and to a certain extent, partners that are investing in this now are probably well ahead of the curve. So if you're one of those that's looking at this as, as being a key part of your business, I think you're preparing for something that's clearly coming down the line. We know this is really important. If you're helping your customers to, to minimize energy consumption um, in a variety of ways, then you're probably well ahead of, well ahead of that curve. Um, some are saying they haven't really considered it um, and that they won't consider it. We expect that to shift quite significantly over the next couple of years uh, as some of these uh, some of this uh, rhetoric kind of builds. And particularly as we're seeing things like COP26 now and others, even if some of these discussions are, are failing occasionally at the government level, what we're seeing is demand at the customer level is high. So we know that some of this is, is there's a clear ROI in terms of partners investing in the capability to actually measure some of these things, create metrics for energy consumption, and then deliver that to the customers. I just want to, to touch on some of the shortages though, and we know that it's an issue that, uh, that everyone is facing. Um, we asked the partners how likely they were to face current supply shortages for server and storage products particularly. Um, and whilst we know that some of these products are being prioritized in, in the supply chain because they are higher value, we also know that realistically that we're looking at at least a six month backlog on, on the majority of products um, that, uh, that use processes and raw materials that are in short supply, which is essentially everything. Um, we know that at least a quarter of partners are saying it's extremely likely um, that they're gonna face these issues, particularly in, in, uh, in, in most of the products that they sell. These are infrastructure specific partners um, that deal with this uh, all day. And so they're the ones that are likely to face these issues. The ones that are saying it's not that likely or highly unlikely um, are very much in the software and, and, uh, and security spaces. So they're not going to be seeing some of these issues unless we're talking about uh, hardware firewalls and things like that. But everyone in the market um, is being squeezed. Um, we, do, uh, we do expect this to continue, as I say, into 2022 at least, and possibly 2023. To some extent, that depends on um, how quickly uh, people can improve their uh, distributed uh, supply chain, so how they can invest quickly in, uh, in some of their broader supply chain outside of certain key countries like China and Taiwan. Um, that will take some time, so that's very much a watch this space. John Thompson and John Andrew, thank you very much, guys, uh, for joining us here today. Um, I wonder if you could just give an intro uh, to yourselves, to, to the audience, your position, and uh, a, a little bit of background on the company. Oh, advanced power technology um, been around for over 30 years um, and we started with uh, sort of supplying just power backup generators UPS systems and um, and then we've, we've built out from there over the years to to provide full turnkey solutions for data centers um, and for uh, you know looking after um, distributed assets you know for, for hospitals and universities. Um, and just creating the perfect space for for their IT uh, infrastructure to go into with all the power and the cooling and the monitoring and the racks and everything like that. Um, so we've been doing that over the years. We have a case study, which is what we're going to talk about today, which is the uh, with with a, a Midlands University uh, hospital, um, where they had a, an issue with um, uh, lots of UPS um, uh, uh, across their estate. Uh, probably 200 rooms or something like that uh, and they didn't have any visibility of these um, they 
uh, once a year somebody would walk around and sort of have a look and see how old the batteries were see what, what needed replacing and such yeah so <laughs> so they asked us they asked us if they, we could come up with some kind of preventative maintenance some kind of review annually yeah. um and when we this is what we've been doing for years you know we've been walking around universities and, and hospitals and uh you know putting things into spreadsheets or or, or, or capturing the information with uh, with monitoring software but um really the game changer was uh, when schneider brought ite infrastructure uh, ecostructure ite mm -hmm. out and we started deploying that with this particular hospital we've deployed that and uh, straight away uh, you can see you can see all their assets and they, they can see what they have there they can see the age they can see the serial numbers they can see the health of of the ups's um and you know instead of it being once a year you can have you you've got a, a, a in the moment PMV, you know, you can go and you can go and look at any one of those assets and see the health of it, and uh, and you can start to um, put together a a real plan of, uh, of how you're going to how they're going to move forward and how they're going to um, uh, a plan to to replace those as they come up. Um, so, I mean, it's interesting because you, you mentioned, obviously, that, that this is clearly a customer. We're talking about an NHS trust. We're talking about a healthcare use case. Um, and we're talking about what is what is essentially someone moving to, to the next phase of consuming some of these, these products. And you mentioned that you had 200 rooms. They probably would have done that manually before. Now they're looking at kind of having a, a real kind of asset management or managed service wrap around this. Now, one of the things I'm, I'm interested in is, um, is that you, I, I would imagine that obviously the hardware piece of this is still a very important part of your business. And partners are consistently hearing um, drive towards managed services, drive towards services led models. But to a certain extent, I think that what's, what's really come out of the last year and a half or two years is just how important IT hardware has been to keeping things going and just how much that's driven revenues for, for a lot of people. And I just wonder if, um, if you, you find the same thing, that actually, whilst there's a lot of discussion around some of these points, which are very useful um, to the customers, actually underlying that is still a huge amount of demand for, for hardware, and there's still a huge amount of business to be done there, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, it's, just, it's just that now we can, you know, we, can, we can manage it much better and we can predict things that we couldn't before. Um, things are much more visible. John, uh, John Andrew, I wonder if I could just ask you, just ask you as well, if you could uh, give a quick intro to, to yourself and, and to your position, um, and also how you were helping the customer in this particular deal. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, John Andrew, uh, technical sales at uh, APT, and I've uh, been the one uh, working with uh, Birmingham Women and Children's Hospital on this uh, particular um, project. Um, they came to us because they'd, they'd had a power outage and some of their kit had gone down. It hadn't come back up. Um, and it, although I don't think it disturbed, it didn't affect the, the delivery of any of their hospital services. It was a kind of a, an awakening to the fact that perhaps some of their uh, assets weren't being properly managed. And that's why they, they got us involved. And we deployed Ecostructure IT Expert and uh, well, I, I guess it was a success story, really. Um, we're able to kind of really, really easily tell them what's coming up in terms of um, kind of battery replacements or UPSs that are re reaching their end of their life or uh, faults on the UPSs. If a, if a UPS is um, operating abnormally, i.e. The, the fan speed is too high or it's um, a lot of battery cycles, IT will be able to, to highlight that and say, look, uh, this uh, UPS is an um, area of concern. Uh, take a look at it. Um, so you, we, we can, we can uh, log in from, from our offices, um, view all these assets and, and kind of give technical advice to uh, Birmingham. So, so the, from one perspective, they've got that visibility. And on the, on the other hand, they've got uh, us who um, are kind of experts in the infrastructure, um, we were, were there not 24-7, but uh, I guess we could be, to uh, answer questions and uh, troubleshoot things with them. And it's, it's much easier for, for us to be able to 
troubleshoot things with full visibility of kind of their assets. And there's, there's, well, there's, there's sort of two things that I, I, I want to ask about. Um, the first is, did the customer know that things like EcoStructure exist and that they can get these insights that probably that essentially help them to manage infrastructure much better? Or was that something that you they brought you in to essentially solve and you knew this existed? Um, or, or were they, yeah, were they just kind of, were they just asking you and, and didn't necessarily know what was out there on the market? What was their level of knowledge and what was available? I, I don't believe they knew of uh, EcoStructure IT before we, we went in. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, and it's been a perfect solution for them. They weren't thinking. They were, sorry, Robin. They weren't thinking along these lines. They were. They were asking us if we would come in and go and around and walk around and you know, and kick kick the UVS and smell them and find out. You know that that's what they want. But with single phase UPS, you can't really do that. You can. You can. You can make sure there's no dust on the front of them. You can. But you can't just by looking at them. You can't get all that information John was talking about there. And you certainly can't do it with it right right across the piece. You know. And when they so the, the second part then I guess is is when they found out, um, and this goes to something which I'm I'm seeing a lot of partners discussing with me at the moment, particularly as they drive kind of more managed services at least as part of their overall business, is it helps to retain customers because the customer service is both predictable and significantly better. Am I over assuming the benefit of these things, or is that exactly something you you would assume as as being an outcome of of essentially being able to deploy these solutions? I think it definitely enables us to better service our customers. Um, they, they, I guess, could decide to go with somebody else two years down the line if, if we weren't, um, if they didn't think we were doing what we needed to do. But obviously, that's our. Uh, we've got to, you know, keep them happy and and uh, be there for for when we for when they need us. I guess. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think I've, I've, I have found in, in partner conversations recently that, that I think that one of the one of the pluses and minuses of managed services um, in, in infrastructure is, of course, you need more skills and you need more resource and perhaps more capability, um, which is one area where, where partners are obviously trying to invest in and, and some are finding it difficult to get the skills they need or, or train them in, in time in order to, to build up that new customer business. But the, th the thing is that what it does, it does provide you the opportunity to, to improve customer retention, which essentially allows you to drive profitability in managed services um, in the long run. John Thompson, I, I'm just wondering if that's something that you, is that something you, that you do measure? Is it, it things like customer retention? Is that something important to you? Is that something that, that allows you to, to essentially plan for the future is, as other, other partners, I know some do and, and some are perhaps a bit more in the dark about how they can improve these things. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very important to us. It's really, a, it's a core value of ours is, is, you know, developing and maintaining long-term relationships with our customers. That's the way we work, you know. Um, yeah, that, and, and so we, we, you know, we would do that in the past just by being there and, and giving as much help as we could. You know, we'll go and do, we'll go and give advice. We'll be there on the phone, you know, and work in, in partnership with our, with our, uh, customers but this just gives us much more uh, of, a, of an insight into what's mm -hmm. going on there and, and gives us an edge you know take for example you know we might, might, might just take a simple ups system and there it is and there's, there's some thought about whether it might need replacing um we we were a bit a little bit in the dark in the past as to you know what the load was like on it what the conditions of that ups were but now you know we can look at that and we can see oh look there's only three kva load on that and it's a 10 kva ups so let's you know advise that well let's look if it's going to if that that power is going to expand in the future or if not let's advise going with a, a smaller ups you know and that is it's just little things like that we can we can just we've got so much more visibility that we can advise them much more uh, yeah, helpfully and is there do you th what's the what do you think of the kind of the I would say what are the kind of improvements that you'd be looking to make now that you kind of deployed these things in, in one use case, you've had time to use it, you've had time to, to try it out. What do you think could be the next stage for, for these kinds of tools other than perhaps just asset insight? Are there other things that you'd be looking for it to maybe do in the future um, with tools like these? 
Yeah, um, yeah, definitely, definitely to, to develop how how we're using them. I mean, one one of the great things, which is another another site that we deployed um, this software at, um, it's the it's the uh, uh, we there was a, there was an issue with with a piece of kit and. Um, it's Schneider, so this could be directly monitored by Schneider. So Schneider are directly monitoring this this particular site. Um, so a part was sent out, and an engineer was scheduled before the uh, anybody knew there was a problem. Really, before before the client knew there was a problem, we you know. Um, so it's that f speed of response. Um, there's lo there's lots of little things. There's the predictability. There's all the benchmarking, all the other things that John can tell you about this. Software that that are, that, are, that that where we can offer things, offer services to the to the customers that we couldn't offer before, based on that amount of information that we've got. You know, so I don't know. You want to talk about the benchmarking, John, or the that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean the, the benchmarking and all the kind of information it uh, it spits out um, is is fantastic for. For, for for both us and the customer when it, it when they need to kind of um, predict what they're going to need to spend on infrastructure replacements in uh, in the future so they can forecast you know next year's spend will be x amount two years time it'll be this amount just because you you can there's literally a graph that shows a line it shows um it gives you a, a, an exact date of when it will it expects the battery to have depleted by. So and and you can pull a report that will will give you a uh, estimation of how many batteries have been need, need replacing over the next year, two years, and it's it's all uh, uh, quantitative evidence. Um, so there's no kind of doubt, uh, and that makes it very easy for. Uh, us to communicate to the customer and then for the customer to com communicate to the higher ups, maybe um, a procurement, look, this is a graph, this shows us what we're going to need to do. So let's let's budget for that. That's, that's interesting. I mean, I, I was wondering as well, because that leads me to maybe some of that, that kind of, that some of the kind of energy consumption and, and sustainability issues that, that we're seeing certainly here at Canalis and and I was wondering, John Thompson, from your perspective, is this something you're seeing customers ask you about around uh, not just the consumption, but also essentially how they improve sustainability? Did, did these kinds of solutions actually help you do that and in, maybe improve that, the, the, the information you can give to a customer about building that conversation? Yeah, these do. I mean, this is, this is, this has been part of what we do, what we've done for, for years, you know, and, and, uh, um, but you know, it used to be that oh well, you know, put this more efficient equipment in, um, you know, and, and 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 then it then it became obviously we had to measure, measure and verify things, um, and uh, but it was always it was always it, 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 you know it began as a nice to have, but it was more expensive to do it that way. Uh, then it became you know it was it it was very important. It was part of the part of the contract that it had to be more efficient, um, and. And now it's just it's it's just sitting there as a uh, as, as just something that's understood. You know, we've got to make things as as efficient as we can. The flip side is resilience. You know, that you if if you want something to be resilient, it's not necessarily going to make it more efficient. But um, yeah, so making things making things as as efficient and as sustainable as possible. Um, but what uh, software like this will do is what. I think John was saying there was you know, it's it's you've got the data there you can yeah. you can prove things and show things you know we can we can put this on uh, we can put this on a, a data center before we refresh it before we do yeah. refurbishment on it and we can have a look and see what power it's consuming uh, and then and how it's running get all this information and then we can refresh it we can do the whole refurbishment and we can compare the two and we can show them we, in fact we're doing this with with another hospital and we can show them that and we can say what about your other room because look how how much the the efficiency has improved on this and how much money you're saving and john one of john's roles is to quantify that um you know how, how much is being saved and you know uh, yeah i mean john knows much more about that kind of thing than i do but well actually a question for for, for you john Andrew, there is is I mean, I know this is a healthcare use case, technically working working for hospital. John Thompson mentioned another, but is this is this the kind of thing that presumably allows you 
to focus on a very much horizontal play rather than a vertical play. Um, these kinds of solutions probably allow you to expand into other into other sorts of customers as well. Um, it, it, uh, what kind of what what kind of demand are you seeing out there in the market? What kind of customers are looking for these solutions? Uh, customers with with distributed IT, uh, be it uh, hospitals, um, universities, um, factories may have um, twenty factories across the country, um, all of which have got five or six comms rooms. Um, it's kind of uh, not such an easy task if you've got um, IT managers stationed in you know, down in London. Mm -hmm. They they this sort of software is fantastic for them. Um, but back onto the sustainability piece, um, this is something I found particularly interesting uh, that we were able to do with uh, Birmingham uh, Hospital and ITE was uh, look at the, the power consumption of the, um, uh, the, the units they currently have. Let's say we go back to the scenario John mentioned where it was three kilowatts on a, on a 10 kVA UPS. Now, the, the lower... Um, if a, if a UPS is running at a low load, it's much less efficient. So with that data um, that you can get from ITE, you can say, well, let's look back over the last three or four months. This, this UPS has never power, um, the load on it's never risen above three or four kVA. So let's put a five in there and it will be, um, you know, 80, 85 percent loaded. And you're going to you're going to therefore uh, get a much higher efficiency out of the UPS. And then if you extrapolate that same process across a, an estate of um, 100 or so UPS, that can um, get a significant uh, energy reduction. Um, and I, I did that for 100 or so UPS, and uh, it came out as uh, that we could save about 10%, 10 uh, just by replacing the UPS uh, by a, a more efficient uh, a more efficient option um, and obviously we wouldn't advise going around replacing a two three year old UPS just to get a, a slightly more efficient uh, right size one but if you're going to roll out um, um, new UPS across your whole estate because they need replacing because they're no longer going to provide the backup that you would expect then you may as well take this approach so yeah it's uh, it's it's pretty pretty impressive stuff, really. Yeah, I think I would I mean I would imagine being able to show other customers that kind of demonstration. You could show, you could you could actually save ten percent there on on. I mean, it just makes sort of makes it seem like other customers are likely to want to engage with with any solution that that delivers that. How's how's the market in the UK looking at the moment? Are you seeing investment being made in in data centres? today and what how do you expect that to develop really what what's your visibility into the future we don't kind of overtly charge for that that's not something as, as john said you know if we do our job properly and this 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 helps us to to do our to do our job properly to be an advisor to them to to help them to plan and and then hopefully they they will buy the infrastructure from us it's more i guess for a schneider or a company such as that with a larger kind of global presence to uh, affect and influence the market, whereas as were the kind of people that implement um, the solutions and, and look after the end users in the in the best way we can. No, that's fair. Well, I think I think you know some of the some of the growth that we're expecting and, and that you're seeing is is likely to to continue. We know that demand is there. We know that there's there's some reasonably healthy investment. So hopefully that will continue for you guys as well. We know that the UK's uh, there's certainly a boom in, in digital transformation going on and, and continuing. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to monitor that and uh, hopefully we'll get the chance to uh, maybe catch up uh, next year as well and just see how APT is doing there. But I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much to, to APT, to John Andrew, Don Thompson for, for joining us. And thank you very much for, for Schneider Electric for bringing us all together. Um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, seeing this, this presentation, obviously seeing this customer use case from APT. Uh, and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.